Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Genevieve. I am a chiropractor in the UK West Midlands and today I'm going to be explaining what a slipped disc actually is. Now I see disc patients on a weekly basis and every week I will have at least one new patient with disc pain presentation and really commonly they will say to me I've got a slipped disc and I'm hoping that you can pop it back in for me. This is why the term slipped disc is not a good one. It gives people the impression that the disc has somehow moved out of place, slipped out of place, and that it can be put back in place with a well executed adjustment. This is absolutely not what a slipped disc is and it absolutely cannot be popped back into place with a chiropractic adjustment. And here is why. So to explain what a slip disc is, I need to first explain the basic anatomy of a disc. This is what one looks like, as if you were looking down your spine from the top of your head. This is the back of the vertebrae, the pointy bits that you can feel, and this bit's the front. This bit here is where your spinal canal is. Now this is the disc sitting in between two vertebrae. This isn't just balancing there, it is physically attached it's, it's going nowhere, it's not going to slide out from between your vertebrae unless a surgeon moves it for you. Now I always describe a disc as being a little bit like a jam donut. It has an outer ring which contains a jelly-like substance in the middle. Now the outer ring is like a really strong collagen tissue which allows the movement but also resists movement in particular directions. I'm not going to go into detail about how. The jelly is responsible for shock absorbing and maintaining pressure. This bit is important for those of you with disc pain, so I will come back to this. Now two important interesting facts about discs is one, the jelly in the middle has never been exposed to your immune system. Your body doesn't know that it's you. And two, the discs are highly pressurized structures, which means that the blood vessels and the nerve endings would literally collapse if they tried to infiltrate the disc. So they could, that's why you're only seeing them on the picture around the outside of the disc, because the, the disc is under so much pressure that they can't extend into the disc. So what happened when you leant forward that one time and couldn't get back up? Most of you with disc injuries will remember that time when your back just failed you. What actually happened was it tore. You sustained a tear in the outer ring of your disc. As I mentioned before, these fibres are containing the jelly in the middle, your shock absorbing, pressure maintaining jelly. If this tears, the jelly starts to seep out through the tear. When it does this, the pressure in the disc is reduced. Think of it as a puncture in your tyre. If you've ever looked at a puncture, punctured tyre, it bulges out at, at the bottom. This is what happens to the disc. It starts to bulge out beyond its anatomical space. And for those of you with sciatica, your injury probably looks something like this. You've got your disc tear, jelly leaks through the cracks, pressure is reduced, the integrity of the disc is lost and starts to herniate into this space here. And this is your spinal canal. And either side, there are little holes where your nerve roots exit to go down your leg. Now, if the disc bulges into this space, then it touches or squashes the nerve root, giving you a trapped nerve, as well as a herniated disc. Now, this is just one type of disc injury. How the disc tears and the pattern by which the jelly leaks out can vary, and it will change the type of treatment and management that is appropriate for you to rehabilitate this injury. One thing that is always consistent with disc tears is the pressure loss. If you remember at the start of the video I said that the disc is highly pressurized and that is why blood vessels and nerve endings cannot infiltrate the disc. Now if you've torn your disc and the pressure reduces enough that blood vessels and nerve endings can extend into the disc then this complicates your injury further. Because where you've got blood vessels you have immune cells and those little fighting cells are going to come into contact with that foreign jelly that it's never seen before 
you can see why that is going to be a problem for you. Where you've got nerve endings, you have pain receptors. Now, I'm not going to explain all of the different types of disc injury in this video because it is going to be a very long video. But if you are interested, then I have already written a blog post on my clinic website, which does have the different uh, types of disc injury. If you would prefer that I do do a video, then please let me know in the comments below. So hopefully this video has shed some light on what a slipped disc actually is. It shouldn't be called a slipped disc. It is a disc tear or a disc herniation. Please don't ask your chiropractor to pop it back in for you. As I've explained, it is fluid that is leaking through the tears in your disc. You cannot push fluid back in with an adjustment. I don't care how good your chiropractor is. This is not to say that chiropractors can't help. Obviously they can. This video is to hopefully give you an understanding of your injury and then maybe that will also help manage your expectations from treatment. Disc injuries do take time. A tear can easily take 18 to 24 months to heal. That doesn't mean that you're gonna be in pain for 18 to 24 months, but the risk of re-injury is very high. Your pain will go, you will forget, and then you'll reach for something one day and you've just picked the scab on that healing tear. It's a common pattern with discs where patients will come in and they'll say, oh, I'll get a flare up every few months, every so many months, or once a year, I'll get a flare up. It's not a flare up. It's a setback of that same injury. Once torn, you can't get that pressure back. A lot of patients will ask me, will it ever really be back to what it was? Not really. It will always be a weak link in your, in your, in your spine. So, you know, when your pain is gone, don't forget about your injury. It is still gonna be weaker than the neighboring segments. Thanks for watching anyway. Do let me know if you would like a more detailed video on the different ways you can injure discs. The blog post does have all the information to though, so if you want to check that out, then I'll post the, um, the link to that down below. If you found the video useful, then do hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.